Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Psychology course. Today we're going to be looking at ethical guidelines. What are ethical guidelines? After the Stanford Prison Experiment, which was conducted by Zimbardo, which looked at how social roles are going to influence behaviour, the British Psychological Society came up with a set of guidelines for future psychological research. This was done to ensure that all psychological research is in fact ethical and does not affect the participants in any way. So what were they? They were classified as DDRIPP guidelines, or otherwise DDRIP. This is an acronym which stands for all of the names of these guidelines. The first of which is deception. Participants must be told more or less what they're going to be doing um, so that it doesn't completely deceive them when doing the experiments. This could then make them feel bad after the experiment has taken place if they haven't actually um, been told completely what they are going to be doing in this experiment and therefore have been deceived. So it's not like you have to tell them every single detail of the experiment because if it's an experiment which is going to test their reaction to something, you don't want to pose a, a reaction um, post the you know pre-experiment which is going to make them want to react in a certain way, but you have to tell them more or less what is going on. So for example, in Milgram's experiment, uh, people weren't actually told that the participant is actually a confederate and fake and the screams and the um, kind of way a participant is being hurt when subject to that is in fact fake because that would completely throw it off. But in Milgram's experiment they were completely deceived and that could actually harm them. Milgram's experiment is a big experiment which we're going to be looking at later in the course when we look at obedience. So, debrief. This is a guideline where participants must be told that they have the right to remove themselves or any data from the study and they're debriefed from their kind of rights in this actual experiment. They are also debriefed and told that they have the opportunity to talk to the experimenters to know the true aims of the study. So this kind of debrief um, after the experiment allows them to know any information which they didn't know prior to it and therefore makes them feel a lot better about what they've just gone through. The right to withdraw. In this instance, the participants are told that they can remove themselves from the study at any time they want. They are told how to withdraw and how not to be harmed when withdrawing, so as a result, if they're actually doing the experiment, they're not going to be harmed. For example, in Zimbardo's prison experiment, they weren't really given the, the right to withdraw at all, and as a result, the people in that experiment suffered psychologically in terrible instances. For example, the prisoners who actually had to be removed from the experiment physically because they were being psychologically traumatised. If they were given the right to withdraw, when they did feel slightly traumatised, they could have just left and prevented a lot of psychological harm. Which brings us on to informed consent. Participants may only participate in an actual experiment if they've consented to take part in this study and they know all the information involved. So this pretty much means you cannot participate in a study if you haven't given full consent knowing what's going to actually be happening. If you don't, then therefore you are breaching the guidelines. Protection from psychological harm. In this instance, participants must be managed so that they can exit the study unharmed and they're not traumatised. They are made sure that they are leaving unaffected. So this can be a perhaps a debrief from psychologists which can then let them know how to actually um, interpret everything they've been going through and then as a result they're not going to be harmed psychologically when they leave. Privacy. This is the final guideline and it states that participants have the right to know who is going to read their results in a report and they also have the right to remain anonymous and uh, make sure that their life remains private in the experiment and their name isn't publicised. Researchers also can't invade their personal life when conducting the experiment because they have the right to remain private. Here's some questions on the ethical guidelines or the DDRIP guidelines. Have a go at answering these on another sheet of paper by pausing a video and then hit play for whenever you're ready to see the answers. Here are the answers. If you got these right, congratulations. I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which will be on obedience. And we're now going to be looking at perhaps the factors which are going to influence obedience and also uh, Milgram's world famous study. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you.